Now, it is the eve of the 60th anniversary of the EU, with tomorrow marking six decades since France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg signed the Treaty of Rome. Well, that treaty paved the way for the modern EU of 28 countries and 510 million people. While well, European leaders are gathering in Rome to celebrate the occasion, but with Brexit about to be triggered just next week and deep internal divisions over migration policy, the future of the Union has never been so unclear. Well, let's uh, find out what the mood is in Rome now. And Karin Giannoni is there. Karin, um, does it sort of feel like it's facing an existential crisis there in Italy at the moment? Well, Gita, in a few hours' time, those 27 leaders are going to be attending a private audience with the Pope at the Vatican behind me. Some observers have commentated that perhaps they're seeking divine inspiration for help with a moment like this in the EU's history. But uh, just to bring you a couple of lines, because the president of the EU Commission, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, has been talking to our Europe editor, Katia Adler, and he's been talking about the, the crisis, the challenges, if you like, facing the European Union on this 60th anniversary. He has said that the EU, according to him, isn't in the best shape that it could be in. And he also added that uh, the EU isn't going to seek to punish Britain when it leaves. Uh, he would negotiate with the UK, he said, in a way that is fair but not naive. Let's get some perspective on the moment that we've reached in the EU's history and the challenges ahead with the former Italian Foreign Minister Franco Frattini, he's also former EU Justice Commissioner. Mr Frattini, I mean, what sort of moment is this for Europe? Well, it, it is a very sensitive moment. We run the serious risk to have a disgregation of European Union. We run the risk to have a dissolution and to lose momentum since the founding fathers had in mind a political project. They don't, they didn't believe about a purely economic project nor a bureaucratic project. Now we are running the risk to have a purely bureaucratic dimension going ahead and to miss all the opportunities given by relaunching the political dimension of European Union. Of course, furthermore, we have Brexit. Uh, UK will have to negotiate not only with European uh, institutions, will have to negotiate uh, bilaterally with the remaining member states of Europe to have bilateral agreements. So it will be a, a critical uh, interaction of different factors. From the beginning of your answer, you seem to be saying it almost is facing an existential crisis. Yeah, it is. It is really, we, we, we are not just running the risk to have a problem to Eurozone. Uh, the real fate of Europe is at risk, and the credibility of the leaders of Europe is at stake. Is the Do you get that the, the 27 leaders who are going to be drinking champagne in their secure compounds celebrating 60 years uh, get a sense of how bad that is, according uh, to you? Well, it, it would be a, a, a really significant event only if they will refrain from putting a table a minimum common denominator declaration saying only what is acceptable to Poland on one side and to Finland on the other side. They will be diluting the level of ambition and the result will be criticized by the ones and by the others. I hope that Prime Minister Gentiloni will be able not simply to accommodate and to mediate but to put on the table an ambitious proposal. Right, so you're saying that the, the level of, of ambition has to be so low in a way to get 27 to agree to it. Yes. Uh, therefore, what, what tangible uh, can actually come out of this? Well, uh, I, I remember from the history uh, times where there were institutions of European Union strong enough to say, this is our proposal, it is a political ambitious proposal, take or leave it. Now we want to keep all around the table, we should have the courage to say, dear Polish friends, you don't want to further integrate, but you don't allow us to integrate further. This please is not acceptable. What you seem to be hinting at is this idea that we've been hearing from all sorts of quarters, even Angela Merkel talked about it in vaguely accepting terms in January of a multi-speed Europe, of a two-speed Europe yeah. where some are more integrated than others. Yeah, we have already now a two-speed, but uh, 20 speed different because uh, we have different opinion on foreign policy, on security, on economic trade. So we should take into consideration what is the reality. At least inner circle where there are those who want to further integrate on security, on defense, on economic governance. 
leaving the doors open to those that will like to join without any precondition except fulfillment of our criteria. This is the only possibility to save Europe, otherwise it's finished. We must leave it there. Franco Frattini, former Italian Foreign Minister, thank you very much indeed. Thank so you. Uh, the 27 leaders hope to leave Rome, having signed uh, some uh, declaration uh, on Saturday, uh, charting a course for perhaps the next decade uh, for Europe at a time of great history, but enormous challenges as well.